We've walked in the direction of dip and we're still on the diamictite. But this is a very different rock. Isn't it? It's, it's sitting on top of the diamictite, uh, chocolate coloured. There's no sign of any drop stones in it. It's bedded and uh, it looks like a sandstone. Yeah, well, it's certainly not chocolate coloured inside. It's white, look. It's white. So I would suggest this is a, an impure sandstone. Yeah, it's a, a medium grain uh, quartz sandstone. So it can't possibly be glaciogenic? No, I don't think so. So shall we walk to see if uh, we can get some more, see some more sandstones higher in the sequence? Yes. All right, help. Yeah, the higher sandstones are white, pure quartz, I think, and wonderful planar bedding. High energy currents and laminar flow. Yeah. Well-bedded sandstones often contain structures related to the environment of deposition. From a distance, ripples of different kinds can sometimes be seen preserved on the bedding planes. Here are some ripples. They look to me as if they're asymmetrical. Yeah, so they are. Uh, they indicate the current flow. Grains transported by the current along this gentler slope and then deposited down current on the steeper slope. So they, I think they indicate current flow towards the modern north. Here are some lovely asymmetric ripples. Yep, the crests are going like that and the current direction is in this direction. So it's completely different from what we saw before. It is. Yeah. Here's a ripple in cross section. Yep. And the current direction is again towards the modern north. Sandstone strata can be complicated when seen in cross section sometimes showing cross-stratification related to ripple formation. Some clearly express sediment transport directions. The structure at the centre preserves laminations that were deposited on the lee slope of a migrating asymmetrical ripple. Their direction of dip is that of the ripple-forming current to the modern north. At the top right is a similar structure, but in this case current flow was in the opposite direction. An even better example of a migrating ripple in cross-section again shows a northward flow direction. At least on a small scale, the sandstones clearly show evidence for shifting directions of water flow. Current indicators in sandstones also occur on a larger scale. The lower part of the cliff shows cross-stratification formed by a large sand wave, a mega-ripple or subaqueous dune. The dip of this kind of large-scale cross-stratification indicates southward current flow and high energy currents. The sandstones are full of evidence for alternations in flow direction. This is characteristic of tidal action in shallow water. With two tides each day and an ebb and a flow for each of them, inevitably evidence for varying current directions will be preserved in tide-dominated sediments. In enclosed basins, tidal flow can be extremely powerful and geologists interpret signs of it as evidence for near-shore conditions. Is it possible to show that these sandstones weren't deposited in glaciogenic conditions? Because that would really challenge the snowball earth hypothesis. Well, floating ice is not well known for uh the wave action. If we could find evidence for, uh, for the effects of waves, I think that would do it. And this bedding plane here, I think it does it. Look at this. Rounded, 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 some sort of ripples, and they're symmetrical. I think these are wave ripples. 
so they definitely couldn't have been laid down under ice. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, there was no ice, I don't think, uh, when, this, uh, when this sandstone was laid down. The symmetry of ripples formed by wave action results from the back and forward movement of particles, a motion induced by waves at the sea surface. Look, we've come to the top of the sandstone and the boundary and another diamictite. Oh, yeah. Well, there's two diamictites, one underneath the sandstone, so glaciogenic diamictite, tidal sandstone, glaciogenic diamictite. So we have two different environments. Yeah, well, that's not uh, easy to reconcile with the, uh, with the snowball earth hypothesis. 